to check in with Quincy Mayor Thomas Koch on our Tuesday mornings for a City Hall update. How are you, Mayor? Doing fine. How are you, Joe? Doing great, thank you. These early mornings have been nice, actually. The late risers miss all the sunshine. <laughs> I know, it is beautiful. Really nice, yeah. And speaking to the Commissioner of uh, Natural Resources uh, recently, there is a, just a ton of stuff going on across the city. <laughs> there is indeed. Uh, Dave Murphy, our Commissioner, is doing a great job overseeing a number of projects. Uh, it's good. It's all good stuff. It really is. And their Mother Nature has really cooperated nicely, thankfully. We can have some nasty springs for sure. Indeed. Yeah. Well, it is, we did need that rain on Sunday. That was that was much needed. Yes. So that was good. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it is also budget season, right? And I know you're hot and heavy into that right now. Yeah, it is that time of year. And, uh, you, you know, we put together all the pieces. I mean, there's so much of it is, is fixed, what you're starting with. Um, you know, your number of employees and certain expenses uh, some go up like energy uh, rubbish will be up this year um, recycling will be up this year so it is those automatic fixed costs that, that that happen but yeah we're preparing it now putting it together uh, I have moved the date from May 1st to May 15th for the presentation which still meets the letter of the law set forth by the state it's going to be submitted 45 days before the end of June uh, the council then has their time to uh, ask any questions deliberate and then take action so uh, looking forward to that process with my department heads and department managers uh, going forward. So, you know, I, I don't see a whole lot of new things in there. Uh, we'll be dealing with the the contracts that have all been settled over the last year. So there's a 3% built-in raise July 1st for all the, the employees, uh, not the department heads or department managers, not the appointees. But those were all raises uh, under the contracts uh, we negotiate with all the unions. So, um you know that's a, that's obviously a fixed cost as well uh, going forward. In the next couple of years, so the the debt we took on for particularly the retirement costs and funded liability, the debt service line is going to go up dramatically over the next couple of years, as we are anticipating and talked about. However, it's still over the next eighteen, nineteen years is going to save us. Uh, oh, I think it's in the hundred and twenty-five million dollar range. So uh, we paying a, a little bit, well, moderately more for a couple of years trading that for uh, a steady increase each and every year over the next 18 years, which you've added up to a lot more money. So uh, so we're dealing with some of those issues, but, um, you know, we're, they're all manageable, which is great. Um, any indication as to the impact on property taxes right now? No, no, not, not at all. I mean, there's so many factors that go into that, including mm-hmm. what a new growth number will be, the values at the time, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, you know, we try to, uh, like, you know, it's it might be a little bit more than what we've been doing the last couple of years, but we still have a lot of excess levy capacity. Uh, We're not even near prop two and a half override. We have the ability to absorb some of these, uh, these hits over the next two years with the debt service, Um, you know, recognizing that uh, I know nobody likes to pay taxes, uh, but, and I remind everybody all the time and I'll continue to do it. We're right in the 50 percentile uh, in Massachusetts, 351 cities and towns are right smack in the middle on tax burden. I would argue, though, that we're probably in the top five to ten on services and what the return is for people who live and take advantage of the services here in the city. Mm -hmm. So the timeline uh, for the council once they receive the budget is what? They have till June 30th. Okay. And then it gets back to you for final approval? Well, it gets back to us. uh, uh, I mean, whatever the action is, Mm -hmm. is the action that we implement. I see. Okay. And do you have a final number yet for the budget? Nope. Okay. Nope. All righty. Speaking of uh, budgets, the council last night approved the Municipal Broadband Enterprise Fund. I know this has been talked about for, I guess, about five years now to try and create a city-owned Internet service. How would this work, Mayor? Well, that's a good question. It's all still being kind of uh, worked out. We're still in due diligence phase. But this would be – this doesn't necessarily – admit to us doing it, but it's a step in that direction, a mm-hmm. uh, necessary step. And uh, so, you know, we do have, um, you know, we have other enterprise funds. We have revolving accounts in other departments, so this isn't necessarily new to municipal finance, but the municipal broadband exercise, and if we execute, would be new, particularly Quincy's uh, municipal side. So we're still working it through. We've, uh, we've had consultants working with us whether we pick a portion of the city and try that first. Uh, it does depend on 
an, a certain percentage of people buying into it that it could pay for itself. Uh, and that's the piece I'm watching closely mm. because of uh, debt service. I don't want to tackle something that then uh, we don't meet the required numbers to get into it. Um, therefore, it would cost uh, the taxpayers more money. Mm. So, um, I, you know, Ian Kay and the city council from Ward 3 has been a big advocate for this. We've been working closely with him and the outside experts and consultants, I think, on the face of it. Uh, it uh, makes a lot of sense and, and has great merit, uh, but it's always in the details. The devil's in the details, and we're still working through some of that because this doesn't happen too often. It's not, uh, it's not like we have an example that uh, they did it next door in Weymouth or Braintree or some other municipality locally. So we're still working through it, and this is another step in that. The, there is no infrastructure right now, is that right? That the city would have to build that out? That's correct. That's, that's where the cost would be, absolutely. Oh. And has there been an estimate of how much that would be? Uh, I do not have it on my fingertips. There may be, Joe. I haven't seen anything lately. Okay. So so a trial phase later this year, how would that work? Or would there have to be a small system built out? That's, that's kind of the stuff they're working on now. Okay. Uh, one of the recommendations is we do pick a portion of the city build that out uh see what the response is and uh before we tackle the whole city so mm-hmm. and, you know and of course i i gotta believe that you know demographics matter too and you know there may be some neighborhoods that are more affluent that would make bite on this mm-hmm. uh whereas some of them would not and that's that the kind of stuff we got to figure out um you know I, I forget the number off the top of my head joe but i know mm-hmm. it's a in the 60s percentile that would have to sign up for this Great. to make it uh, worthy to pay for itself, right? Yeah, you know. correct. Yeah. Okay. Very interesting. Uh, Mayor, recently I had a chance to uh, chat with a couple of uh, local attorneys who had some questions about the proposed 99-year lease with, uh, for Quarry Hills Associates up at uh, Granite Links, and mm-hmm. suggesting perhaps that an outside firm be brought in to draw up the lease rather than accepting the one that Quarry Hills drew up. How do you feel about that? I uh, look at uh, the lease went back and forth between the attorneys for Quarry Hill and the attorneys for the city of Quincy. I'm very comfortable with the lease, as I said before. If the city council wants to make changes in that lease, uh, that's their purview. Uh, and uh, so if there's these these so-called expert attorneys have some suggestions to the council, they should make it. Uh, I don't think we have to start from scratch. We, we are living with a lease currently today. Uh, and we took a what was a a, uh, a barren, uh, ugly landfill and turned it into something positive um, with his also sharing revenue with the city of Quincy. I think it's a great project. So I, I'll, uh, I'll let the council do their work and, and hopefully we can figure this thing out. You know, they were suggesting that the proposed new lease would actually be a detriment financially to the city uh, as in relation to the current lease. Is, is that, do you agree with that? I don't, but you know, everybody has an opinion. Why is this happening now? Do you know? Well, I mean, you're getting into the amount of years left, and like anything else, uh, Furnaceburg Golf Club, for example, um, maybe ten years ago was coming up to uh, it being extinguished between the city and the city is going to take it over. The golf course then made the decision if if we couldn't extend it that they weren't going to spend any money up there. They couldn't get any money from a bank without any continuity or, or uh, more years, obviously, on the lease. So I think Quarry Hills are going through some similar things. They want to do some major investments up there in order to do that, to get the appropriate financing. Uh, you need to have uh, land control for X amount of years. I, I think that's a big part of it. Uh, so, you know, we'll, uh, again, I defer to the council. We've submitted to them the package. We've answered the questions. Quarry Hills has answered questions to them, and the council needs to take a vote. Mm-hmm. All right. Finally, Mayor, can you shed a little light on a uh, plan for a lone sailor statue out at Marina Bay? Certainly. We've uh, we've pivoted a little bit out at Marina Bay. We were originally looking at uh, what's called the teardrop in front of Port 305, that area, mm-hmm. to place this statue and to tell the story of what Squatham was in its day, Naval Air Station, a, a victory plant building destroyers for World War I. So it has a long history of service that piece of land, and the, certainly the residents of Quincy have a long history of service. So we thought putting the, the Lone Sailor statue at Rita Bay made a ton of sense. Uh, now, so 
the uh, the community out there which controls that land, so the condominiums and, and their elected representatives, we're not too keen on the location. So we've shifted gears, and we are now going over to the boardwalk. Uh, the corner right between Cerro's and Port 305 will be a new mini park created there, and uh, the statue will be placed there looking out on the water. Hmm. I think it's actually a pretty neat setup. Is the statue here in the city already? The statue is in storage in a unnamed location. Ah, okay. What is the history of the Lone Sailor um, tribute? Well, it's obviously a tribute to the service of our uh, of our Navy veterans. Okay. The first one was in D.C., uh, right by the D.C. Memorial. It's, it's part of um, other elements there. Uh, tells the story of the Navy. There are 19 around the country. There are none in Massachusetts yet. Uh, Quincy being such a strong military city, uh, not only in service directly um, in the Navy, Army, Air Force, Marines, uh, Coast Guard, etc., but, you know, the shipbuilding that happened in Quincy was pretty robust and incredible, Mm -hmm. uh, both at Fall River, at the Naval Air Station, and other social locations. So we thought it made perfect sense for the city with this history that we should have a lone sailor statue. It was brought to my attention, really, a number of years ago by Bob and Teddy Nazer, brothers who grew up here, both served in the Navy. Mm. Uh, Bob passed away a couple of years ago, but Teddy's still around, and and, and he and the local veterans are huge supporters of, of this effort. So uh, we're making good progress, and, uh, you know, we uh, we're originally shooting for this uh, this fall, but uh, we're probably looking at next spring because of the uh, the time uh, to get the amount of materials and the whole bit. So mm. the other piece of this, we will... Uh, be, there'll be a nice element, and that is the bell, the USS Quincy Bell that used to be on the mall in front of City Hall. It's going to be part of this uh, beautiful mini park, uh, honoring the Navy, and that will honor the shipbuilding as well. So mm-hmm. uh, that's a nice feature also. Very nice. And finally, Mayor, and I'm um, sure you want to uh, extend good wishes to uh, Quincy Ward 5 Councilor Charles Phelan, who's announcing he's not seeking re-election this year. Yes, uh, he came in to tell me a couple of weeks ago, and I wasn't completely surprised. Uh, <laughs> you know, Chuck and Michelle, they've, they've contributed an awful lot to the city, both in elected service and otherwise. I mean, Chuck's involvement in, in uh, he, you know, he's an Eagle Scout himself, but in scouting in general over the years, it's been remarkable. Chuck's involvement in various, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Michelle's involvement in various boards and commissions over the years is pretty remarkable as well. Then, of course, his services at Ward 5 Council, which he had done years ago and returned to a few years ago. So um, he also served as a department head under Jim Sheets and, and under my administration. Uh, Chuck's one of those guys that loves Quincy and wants to see good things happen and participated in, in that in so many, so many ways over the years. So we're, we're grateful for his service. I appreciate his friendship. I've known Chuck. We go back to playing softball against each other on <laughs> Sunday morning some. 35, 40 years ago. Uh, and, uh, you know, always enjoy Chuck, always a gentleman, uh, and uh, always put Quincy first in his decision making. So I'm grateful for his service, and we'll certainly miss him. Sure. I always appreciate your time, Mayor. Have a wonderful day. You also, Chuck. Take Thank care. You. Yep. Bye bye.